Everybody, welcome. Thanks for being here. What did you think of the season premiere of The Strain? I have covered this show since day one. I just, I just, I, I giggle when I watch it because I love all the gory, gross stuff. <laughs> so that's that's what I am. Um, but thanks for being here. I'm Jim Halterman, the West Coast Bureau Chief for TV Guide Magazine, and you guys just saw the season premiere before a lot of other people did. So that's exciting. Um, we're going to get into all that, but I think you'll be really happy to know that. We have one of the actors here, as you know. Um, and one of the reasons I love the show, and I've moderated the Comic-Con panel, I'm doing it again this year, is because of this guy. He plays Vasily Fett on the show. Let's welcome Kevin Durand. Hi, guys. I want, I want to know, do, do you like this stuff? Are you a horror fan? Because the show gets, I mean, the stuff, some of the stuff your character has to deal with is pretty gnarly, but do you like this stuff, personally? Well, not in my personal life. In, in my, my fictional life, I'm totally, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wired to do this. I was, I was so excited from the very first season to get to uh, deal with this heightened, horrible, but beautiful, you know, crazy reality. Uh, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. Okay. We'll, we'll get to all that in just a second. I want to back way up though, because I don't, I don't know your backstory as well. I know you're Canadian, but I didn't know is was acting always the path you were going to be on, or what kind of led you into the the business of acting? Um, I, I thought I was going to be. <laughs> I'm from a place called Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's uh, it's uh, 21 hours north of Toronto, Ontario. Um, Nobody really sets out to do this, you know. Uh, so the first dream was to be a hockey player, um, and uh, when that didn't pan out, there was always this thing in my heart. Like I always, I always wanted to be an actor. I, I really did, but I was like, "There's no way I'm gonna get to do that." And I, I spent so much time entertaining my uh, my family, and uh, I would look for venues. I mean, I was a rapper in Thunder Bay, Ontario. I would, I would rock the, 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 the roller rink every, uh, every Saturday. I, I have, um, when I was 13, um, my, my mom and I were driving through Thunder Bay and, and on the radio there was a Thunder Bay's Funniest Person competition. And I told my mom, I said, Mom, I'm, I'm funny. Take, take me to the mall. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go and I come. She was like, no, you know, I was like, please, mom, please. So she took me, but she didn't stay. She was like, it's going to embarrass me. And she gave me money to take the bus back home. And four hours later, I showed up at the house with a $1,000. And uh, I didn't know, I, I walked through the mall and I was like, what's funny? And I, and I, I got this weird hat and, and I, I mean, I probably wasn't that funny. There probably wasn't that many uh, that much competition to tell you the truth. But I got on stage and there was a guy there that uh, I was 13 and he started sneaking me into uh, uh, local hotels through the uh, back uh, door and I would go up and entertain the adults for 30, 40 minutes. He'd hand me a 50, a 50 bucks, you know, when you're 13. It's like, wow. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was always looking for a venue. I, I didn't know how I'd get, I'd get here. This is where I, I, I dreamt that I, I, I'd, I'd be, but I had no idea how to get here. Well, you were talking a little bit backstage um, just about you know be, working on a lot of the Canadian productions and what a friend said to you about, he said to you about coming to LA and like really pushing your career to the next level. Talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really wanted to come down here. I mean, it's the dream uh, to come here and I'm, I'm sure it's most of your dreams as well, and we're all living it every day and just chasing it down and um, trying to make those dreams become a reality. And it's it's it was a hard journey. And I, I was actually on the uh, phone with one of my best friends, uh, who was kind of like a big brother. And I was working out of Vancouver, uh, did some shows up there and a lot of films. And I was really lucky up there. And and he he was booting me in the gluteus maximus constantly going, you gotta get to LA, get down there, because if you don't get down there, you're always gonna uh, be second guessing whether you could do it or not. And I remember coming down here and being in this building and paying my dues for the first time and joining and just being so inspired and then walking out into 100 degree weather 
and being like, I can't afford air conditioning. I, I don't even know how I'm going to eat next to them. And, and just thinking, oh, how cool it is that, you know, getting to come here and talk to a bunch of my brothers and sisters here uh, in the union and, 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 and just get to, to chat about that. And hopefully something uh, in my journey, hopefully something I, 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 I could say and something you could say to me, we could all inspire each other to continue this journey that we're all on. Because it's tough. It's rewarding, but it's tough. And it's wonderful. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, it's so funny how I can, I can ramble a long time. You can just, <laughs> you could just say a color blue, Kevin, and then I'll just, all of a sudden I'm talking about the Arctic North. <laughs> where the ice is just like, mm. It's not a bad thing, because when you have somebody that gives you a one sentence answer, it's like, okay, let's go to the next question. Yeah. So no, it's all good. I'll try that on the next one. Yeah. Well, Give it to me. I know, I know when I first started seeing you was probably, probably around Lost, um, is, is probably the first show. And I was curious because you do play such a great villain, were you ever worried that that might be all you play because people do start seeing you as a certain thing? Was that anything in your head about that? Yes. <laughs> Tell me about that a little bit more. <laughs> Because Lost is a great, I mean, that at the time, that was such a great place to, for anybody to guest star or have a couple episodes on. Tell me what that did to your career and just how maybe the business saw you. I had no idea that it was going to help as much as it did. Um, I, was, I was doing um, more film work at that time, and I kind of came from an older school of thinking where it's like, I only want to do films. And I remember uh, they called me in, and Carlton uh cues god bless him um i love carlton um and damon had seen me in a movie uh 310 to yuma and uh they had this idea that i should be this martin keeney guy and um it was uh it was it was kind of crazy to see how many people were watching the show and were really into the show because once the episode started airing, all of a sudden my life really uh, changed quite a, a bit because I, I like to be completely, I like to build completely different characters um, from the ground up. And so they all look kind of different and they talk different and walk different. But Martin Keeney kind of, he looked like me. And, uh, and, and he was like Darth Vader uh, to, to me. And, uh, um, and I, I really thought that I was only going to play bad guys, and I really fought against it for a long time. Um, and then, uh, and then I just realized that any time that I get to spend between action and cut, and 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 people are actually paying me money, and I get to do what I love is good. Um, so I, instead of going, oh, I don't want to play any more bad guys, or I only want to play good guys, I'm like, does the project move me you know um am i excited about it and so i, I don't i don't really care because every character is a human being that i get to play and they're all different so uh, i don't really spend much time thinking about whether they're good or bad i just think about why do i, I get to be a part of this or i don't want to be a part of that or you know, you know so it's become more about that more than anything and then carlton turns around and Let's me play the most heroic guy I've ever played uh, in, in Vasily Fett. And man, what a fun four years that, that, that it's what, been. What were those early conversations like when you were talking about the role and who he would be? And it was, you know, such a dark world, but yet he's not necessarily that dark. Like he has a dark side to him, but yeah. I, I, from the first episode, I remember just liking his kind of outlook on everything. But talk about what your early conversations were like with Carl and then the guys. I think Angie, my awesome manager over there, they they they, they gave me a call. They said uh, Carlton Cuse and Guillermo del Toro want to sit down with you, and you just right away you just go yes. <laughs> Don't you want any yes? Um, and uh, funny enough, I had been prepping to do this movie called The Captive, and I had lost forty pounds. I was super skinny. And my hair was all white, and I had this really strange little mustache. I looked like a, if you, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to get totally creeped out, 
it's called the captive. Um, I was getting ready to go shoot that, like literally uh, three days after I met with Gary Moe and Carlton. And we just sat down and they told me about him. And, and I think Gary Moe said, um, he said, he said, have you read the books? I said, well, you called me two days ago. I read the first one. And he was like, he was like you save the world, you get the ass. What else do you want? And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. And he was like, he was like, are you always this skinny? I was like, no, no, this is this is this is very uncomfortable for me. <laughs> I like to eat, uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, it just kind of, you know, when they told me about it, I, I read all three books before I I, I totally jumped in, and and uh, and then off we went. You know, we got to build this. This guy. And, and when I read the books, I was like, uh, when I read the first book, I was like, please let it be Vasily Fett. I wanted to play that guy. Well, you didn't know. He didn't know what you were going to talk about. I didn't know. I was like, man, this guy, something about this guy. I hope I get to play that guy. Yeah. So, so now going into season four, you, I think ever, it was announced pretty early that there would be the last season of the show. Um, and I talked to Carlton about this a couple of weeks ago, but for a writer, I think there's a luxury in that because they're, they know what they're writing towards. Is there a luxury for an actor to kind of know that the end is coming for this character in the story? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, even the stuff that, that lives underneath the lines that you get to speak, uh, or the stuff that's written, all the stuff that you've been building yourself towards, um, to see it, all kind of come together with the uh, the vision of the creators and and uh, and get to actually wrap it up. I've never gotten to do that on a series. Um, you, know, you you play beginning, middle, and end in in films. For me, for a long time, I just played beginnings and death. Uh, <laughs> but uh, for a long time, that was um, uh, it, it's just an, ex an incredible luxury. You know, and and to flesh him out over that time and the relationships that that developed and um, it, it is amazing. Yeah. Well, and something that Guillermo said to you, um, Fett has had a pretty active romantic life in this world since the show started. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, weird thing about that is that up until I got married, until I married my wife, who's the best thing in my life, uh, I was always the guy that was like kidnapping people's wives or eating their children or doing something terrible. And I marry her and then the amount of nudity clauses I've had to sign <laughs> since then, so it was a whole new thing for both of us. I was like, look, I've never done this before. I don't, you could come to set if you want. I don't, uh, um, and, uh, it was pretty weird. And then on this show, I did this this show and, and, and Vikings kind of in the off season from each other. In Vikings, they have me, whenever the Vikings leaves town, my character Harbord roams into town and impregnates. Uh, all the, it's, like, it's like, she's like, <laughs> we get a new script and I'm like, okay, well, they want us to do this. And well, she's like, how many? How many girls? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you remember how last year it was just one and she's like, yes? She's like, it's six. <laughs> six. And one of them's a mother-daughter combo. <sighs> Please don't hit me. So that's been an interesting journey for now. Literally, through all of the, through just these two shows, she's literally like, "Whatever, do whatever you want. <laughs> just go. Just when we're watching it, just tell me to leave the room for a little while. Don't talk about it. I don't want. I trust you. That's it. Do you, you know? Usually, I hear actors say they don't necessarily enjoy those scenes. Um, and I remember, I, I want to say it was season two when you and Ruta had the pool scene. On the yeah. is that season two? Yeah. Talk about that though, because that's that's a whole different thing. It's not even like bedroom stuff. That's you guys are in a pool. A yeah, pool. I remember that. But talk about just from from an actor standpoint, shooting the love scene with that, with you know, in water and with Rudolph. First shot, the first shot that they shot, um, camera was right at ass level. 
and I was walking into the sea. I was like, wow, that's that's pretty interesting. I was like, are they going to use it? And I'm, <laughs> did you say thank you? <laughs> And that's why I do it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so it's strange. It's, it's, it's strange. You have this contraption. You have to shave some of your man fur. And then you have to glue it to you and then put all your pals in there and, and, uh, and, and just kind of walk around like everything's normal. Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of weird. Um, but luckily, I had done uh, the first Viking sex scene before, so that was really my first one. And that one was really, I mean, this is a lot of detail. I don't know if this is an able, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> so they gave me this leather triangle with a string. That's all I had. And I was like, I mean, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with this thing. <laughs> and so you have to glue it in the front and then you have this string and you're supposed to clench. And that's the only way it stays in. So I'm walking around like, um, like I have to go to the bathroom for three days, you know? And uh, so then we do the blocking and then when I get there to shoot the scene, they raise the table. So you try to climb up onto a table while clenching. So we just kind of started the scene with like, everybody, these are my pals. And uh, pals, this is everybody. Get acquainted. <laughs> it's strange. It's a very strange thing. Super technical. Um, uh, at the end of the day, you know, I watch it and, and I'm like, oh, that's, it, it, it looks like two people getting intimate, but on the day you're like, you're thinking about, am, am I clenching hard enough to keep <laughs> that in there? Um, the room went quiet. Everyone's uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Who's clenching right now? He was. <laughs> no one. Ah, that a boy. We got one person who's not lying. The okay. glamour of Hollywood, right? Yeah. It's glamorous. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the season uh, that we're going to be seeing. Uh, the season premieres this Sunday, everybody. So make sure if you want to watch it again, tell your friends. It's, and I've seen the next few after that. It's, it gets better and better, I have to say. Um, but the, the seasons, the world, as we've seen in this episode, it's gotten much darker. Nine months have passed, and Mr. Groyer basically ruling the world, or at least ruling this part of the world. Um, what, what do you think keeps FET going? Because it also seems like a world where hope may easily just go away, but what, what do you think keeps him moving forward? Um, wow, that's uh, not a one-word answer. Um, he, I mean, it, 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 what a basic answer here, but I mean, he loves life. He loves human beings. He loves the world he lives in. He's so in love with America. He's so in love with New York City. He's insanely in love with Brooklyn. Um, he'll give his life um, to bring it back to at least a semblance of where it was before everything uh, fell through the cracks. So as corny as it sounds, it really comes down to love, right? And uh, um, and he's full of it. And uh, you know, in the uh, in the um, in the books, it's always his journaling where we get to see um, he speaks of how he's blossoming amidst the chaos. He's he's becoming stronger. He's becoming uh, really. He's becoming needed. You know, attractive women are like talking to him and doing more than that. And uh, he's, his, his position in this society is different than uh, and, and has elevated from the past. People are realizing that all of this 
he's kind of obsessive with information. He has so much information. He's he 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 uh it just sat there and it aided him in his job as a rat catcher. But now everyone is going to him knowing that no one knows a city like he does. No one knows how to kill like he does. And uh, um, so he's, uh, you know, he's, he's just, he's just propelled by it. Yeah. I remember talking to you, I think probably for the premiere of the show four years ago, we were doing press for it. And, you saying that like him killing rats and bugs, it's it's really no different than killing the munchers. Yeah. They're just they're just bugs that need to go away. Yeah, right? yeah. And how how he they, even he sees it that way? I think he got so good at his job that all of a sudden he had a a really big challenge, and he uh, I think that's part of why when he and the professor meet, you know, he just he's just like teach me, you know, show me show me and he kind of becomes like a father figure in a lot of ways because they share um they share that that uh interest <laughs> that desire you know um, talk about working with david we, we don't see david in this episode but david bradley is is back for the season um talk about working with him yeah and and i also want you to talk about the the music video you guys shot last year for comic-con yeah. which we, i think we debuted at comic-con if i remember right and it was Phenomenal one to see David Bradley rap, but also just talk, talk about working with him and then I want to hear about that video um, From the very beginning David just brings uh, um, an energy um, To the set and he really sets the bar in all ways um, And he reminds you to have fun um, just by the way that he is so um he's like the he, he's like the greatest mentor we could have had on that set you know bringing in all those years of experience and and every day he's so full of light and so excited uh to shoot what he's shooting that day and and to feel that off of him you know after this incredible career that he's already amassed and continues to amass um it just makes you want to aspire to be like that so luckily he and i had a real bromance and and you know um you know we we became really good friends off off camera which kind of fed our on camera relationship and um yeah it's just such a pleasure such a pleasure tell me about making that music video last year which i'm guessing is on youtube you breaks can probably see it it's amazing if you haven't seen it but amps boom <laughs> Um, Carlton had seen these uh, uh, these Instagram videos I was doing with David. I'd pull him away in the middle of the night. It'd be 3 a.m. It'd be like minus 20. And I'd be like, David, don't touch me because I'm close to the edge. And he's like, okay. And he'd be like, don't touch me because I'm close. And and. And we keep practicing, practicing. Then I videotape it. Then I put it on Instagram. And then all the fans seem to really dig it. So Carlton said, why don't you guys do something? So it was just us just really just having a blast. Only now we had a blast with a budget, you know, as opposed to my little Instagram videos. So I don't really know what to I wasn't sure what to do on social media. I was kind of late to it. I just kind of joined it for the show. And uh, so David and I just kind of you know, ran with it and just had fun. It's, it's awesome. You guys make, trust me. Well, yeah, you, you know, you know. Um, you've do, as much as you've done a lot of dramatic work and a lot of action-y type shows, you've also done your share of comedy, and I know you've done some voice work on some animated stuff. The animated stuff, is that is that harder, more difficult, challenging? How does it, because like, I know you did some American Dad, right? I oh, did American Dad and Family Guy. I go in on those uh, quite often, and then... Uh, uh, I did some Glenn Martin DDS and um, uh, that work is like <laughs> you go in for a lot of the times I go in and play the characters that kind of fall through the cracks. They're like, uh, I don't know how to who's going to do an Iranian B-boy rapper gangster guy. And I'm like, I, 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 I can figure it out. Um, or, or like, a, you know, they, they're always like these really random characters. Uh, and, and I just get such a kick out of it. So they let me come in and it's the most wonderful, easiest 
job i just get to go in and just play like a child and and uh if i i've I've really enjoyed that that new kind of um uh you know alleyway that i've been playing in lately uh it's fun well and i I was watching trial and error which is the john lithgow sitcom and there you are i didn't i didn't know you were a part of it and then i saw you in the show um talk about like just being comedic and do you think about it that way or is it still just this is the role i have to play and that sort of thing um i don't i don't know i i think the comedy was just kind of a natural setting for me i mean i went i was doing stand up comedy way before i was reading plays and doing playing bastards and shakespeare you know um so i think because of my size and uh, my face and my intensity i end up playing these dark twisted guys but i'm really just a fuzzy clown you know <laughs> so you know i i i love it i I've, i i inv- i'm i'm inviting it fully into my life because when you get back home at the end of the day after you made a bunch of people laugh all day you know uh you're not carrying any r- residual you know dark twisted stuff in your subconscious <laughs> One of the things I love to do when I do these is look at your IMDb credits and go way back. And you were in, you were in the Spy That Shagged Me, the Austin Powers yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. What? Tell me, what did you do in that movie, and how was that experience? That was pretty early in your career, right? My first audition ever was for Mystery Alaska. Um, it was a hockey movie, and uh, I lucked out and I got it, and I got to work with these incredible peers. And uh, a lot of those guys are still my brothers and mentors to this day, still. Um, um, but the director, Jay Roach, uh, we shot Mystery, and then I made the move to L.A., and he called me and said, you want to come out and play with Mike Myers and I? And being a Canadian boy, I was like, Mike Myers? Are you sure? So I got to show up and, and play with him. I, I, I had like a, I think it was a two- or three-day role where I think they call me Bazooka Marksman Joe or something like that. Or, um and it was just a blast working with him because he's one of my heroes. And uh, yeah, that was, a, wow, Austin Powers. That was a, like 1998, maybe. Yeah. So a while ago, a couple of years ago. Okay. Is there anything on your bucket list that you want to still make sure to do career wise? Like any roles that you have your eye on or just types of roles? Uh, um, I, not really. I mean, I, I just want to continue to um, push the envelope. Uh, for myself, uh, go to places I haven't been, and and I love it. I love being able to carry more weight within the narratives that I work within. So as I age, um, you know, I'm I'm now I'm starting to be in development on 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 projects to, so that I can play the roles that I that that are kind of grabbing me. Um, I, I just love to keep doing what I've been doing and, and, and hopefully get better at it every day and 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 hope the privilege keeps um keeps uh it, that I get the privilege to, to be invited to get to to play for a living. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we have some audience questions. Thanks for everybody that put in questions. Uh where's Laura? I th- I, th- I thought why well, I'm not surprised. Okay, so the question is from Laura. How does it feel to be a sex symbol? <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Is that what I am? Wow. Um, Laura thinks so. <laughs> I, 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 well, that's, that's very sweet. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because, like, my life is really super simple. Um, you know, um, when I'm not working, I spend most of my days... Um, uh, covered in my daughter's poop, and uh, and um, um, I don't think that's very sexy. Maybe I'm diluting the image that you might have of me. But uh, um, I've always felt like a really awkward duck, um, and so I, I think it's in the last like five six years I might be growing into myself a little bit more, and I think maybe that's why I'm playing these characters a little more often. Um, I certainly still feel like an awkward duck. It just it feels like I might know what I'm doing a little bit more. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. 
Should I just take off my shirt? <laughs> just joking. <laughs> High five. Thank you, Laura. Um, where's Terrence? Terrence Taylor. Oh, hey, Terrence. Uh, Terrence wants to know um, your advice for LA-based actors that are thinking about going to Canada for film and TV work. What would your advice be? Um, like to to move to move up there. Yeah. Uh, well, I think um, I left the Vancouver scene in about two thousand and three. Um, the uh, the Canadian market's just like any market outside of LA. You know, uh, the success is based upon um, tax incentives, and and uh, in Canada, it's based on uh, as well. It's based on on the strength of the dollar. So there were times when I when I first went up to Vancouver from here, um, man, it was pumping. Like it was so busy by the time I left there was it, it went from me being hired in fifth or sixth position for different projects and working all night on a project and going to the next project in the morning to, to like by the end guest starring on the same show for the fourth time as a different character <laughs> so it all kind of I think it's all pumping up there again Toronto Vancouver is really really banging I think um, uh, but it all depends on the economic situation and you know the tax situation and stuff um, when you go up there uh, you uh, it's kind of nice it's kind of comforting because it's a little bit of a smaller pool you know I really felt lost here for uh, a, a while um, I think a lot of the work that kind of got me invited here I did up there um, so I think it's pretty fantastic if, if, if you could do it, but I, I'm also, I was born in Canada too. So if, if you do, do you have the citizen shit? So if, if, if you find some way to get around that, then, uh, I, it's definitely something worth looking into. Yeah. Canadians are great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Ryan James. Good luck. Where's Ryan? Oh, hey. Um, she wants to know what 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 is your method to get into your character? What do, what do you do when you have a new character you have to get into? Um, I don't really have a method. Um, a lot of people study different yeah different ways. Um, I just uh, I've always kind of been like ultra kind of uh, sensitive. Um, kind of living on the cusp of all my emotions kind of thing. So I'm kind of, I, I, I use all of that. And when I read a character that moves me, um, that, that I get to actually play and bring to fruition, um, I just kind of read it like it's, like it's, uh, like the way it's written and I try to bring justice to it. Um, I spend a lot of time building, uh, a character like uh, subtext stuff that I'll sometimes I'll just write it down. Sometimes I I write it in rhymes. Um, I've I've written and recorded uh, things that I do to beats uh, that give me kind of my mantras for my characters. Or um, I, I'll I'll forget what's the what's my stuff and what's actually the creators and the writer stuff. And I'll be talking to them and they're like, wait wait he did what? And I was like, well you know because his mother was you know. And they're like. What are you talking? You know, like uh, on 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 Lost with Carlton, I was uh, uh, I was like I was like, well, you know, because Widmore, um, he uh, he he threatened uh, Martin's uh, entire family. He was going to kill the entire his entire family unless he killed everyone on the island by a specific amount of time. And then and then you're all all of a sudden you're like, oh wait a second, so maybe he's not Darth Vader. Maybe he's just like a guy who's like trying to save his life. Right. Um, I I come up with different things that um, that can help me texturize and uh, make every character a human being, you know, who has a life, and you know, and then I just get to live it, and it's. Oh, thanks. That was always my dream was to get to completely get lost and the cool thing about it is that 
um, you know, I've been working a lot over the years and we've done a lot of stuff that a lot of people have seen, but a lot of times people just think they went to high school with me or because I've, I've never really played me at the base of me. Um, but I, I think the most important thing is understanding who you are at the base of you. And like when I was starting out, that I might be going, I should have just gave you maybe a one sentence answer. Maybe you're getting lost. You're like, what the hell is he talking about? Um, <laughs> when I first decided I wanted to get into TV and film, I'd been doing theater for four or five years and, and I've, I finally saved up enough to get a video camera, which we don't need anymore really to record auditions or anything like that. But I would, um, I would take pieces from plays. I was kind of obsessed with plays, especially Shakespeare. And, um, I would record myself over and over doing different soliloquies, uh, you know, monologues, and uh, and I'd watch them over and over and kind of go, I don't believe that, that's not interesting, blah, blah, blah. And, and I, I would, I'd, I did it in a way that was, like, my friends were worried about me because I was so obsessed. I was like, I want to be the best at what I do. And, and um, um, so, you know, I, I would, call my mom, turn record on, and I'd get on the phone, and I'd forget that I was recording it, and then I would watch the conversation, and kind of go, oh wow, when I said that, I was thinking of Chinese food, or I wasn't, I didn't mean that at all, or that, wow, that was really intense, what's that, uh, you know, maybe I could use that for this, or, you know, it's just like, almost like being a scientist, like d dissecting and understanding who you are at the base of who you are, so that you can build on top of that, yeah, but that's all just me just being a slightly crazy person <laughs> and just madly in love with it, you know? Um, so, so let's say somebody comes to you and says, you can play any Shakespeare character in any production, go. What would, you, what would it be? I've always had a penchant to play Iago. Um, I was offered Iago when I was 24, and I looked like I was 40 when I was 24. I don't think they realized that I was as young as I was. And um, I was so excited. And then I said no. And I, I didn't have a job. Like I was a, a very poor actor. I had just fallen through the floor because the floor in my apartment was so weak that my leg went through the floor. Like I could have used the job, but I was so scared of it. I was like, I don't have enough um, life experience to play that yet. And uh, I've never gotten, since I started TV and film, I just haven't, I've only been back to theater once. So, because uh, I love this so much. I love the intimacy of it. And so, Well, these conversations live on on YouTube on the SAG Foundation page. So hopefully somebody sees it. Someone's recording this? Yeah. <laughs> and hope, hopefully somebody will see that you want to play Iago and give this man oh, a role. Oh, cool. Wow. Oh, okay, gosh, that's terrifying. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, everybody, for Thanks, your guys. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, that's very nice. Thank you. The Strain is back this Sunday on FX. Make sure to watch and tell everybody to watch too. Guys, let's take a picture. Take a picture.